It's a great pleasure to be here with all of you. When I first addressed this group in Sydney in 2009 when I was appointed, you might remember the two things that I spoke about in that acceptance speech. I talked about two things, cacophony and symphony. And I said that when you look at the, the, all the activity, the ICANN community, within the individual stakeholder groups or across them, you see tremendous amounts of activity and documents and comments and replies and edits and negotiations and debates that some even call perpetual debates. And you can hear a lot of noise. But if you rise above that and look at what comes out of that rich process of so many parties sharing their views, you might also hear a symphony. And I think in the last three years, we've really made some pretty good music together. Maybe it hasn't been a symphony, but at a minimum, it's been some really good jazz. And of course, on our Wednesday nights, the Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we also now enjoy music night. So that's been a, it's been an exciting process and an exciting time and an exciting road. And, you know, how do we describe to the world what we do? One, one of my favorite magazines has got to be that magnificent UK piece that's so clever, so witty, and often with such wonderful cover pages called The Economist. And what does The Economist call us as a community? What does it call ICANN? Deeply unsexy. Uh, and I think that's cute, and I think that's, that's clever with the, the, uh, the uh, traditional uh, flippance of the economist. But it is hard to understand ICANN from the outside, but inside there's just tremendous richness. And what I'd like to talk about today is what I've done here. You know, my job as CEO, uh, and the mantle is soon, uh, uh, will soon be moving, is to get things done. And I did. That's why I came here, to help transform this organization. And working together, I think we scored some very significant accomplishments. In particular, I'd like to look at three areas. Look at how we overhauled the organization. Secondly, how we opened up and transformed the DNS. And thirdly, how we further internationalized the organization. When I came here, a lot of good work had been done. And I have a lot of respect for Mike Roberts, Stuart Lynn, Paul Toomey, and all the previous CEOs and staff in this organization who worked tirelessly to build ICANN from nothing, from zero, in 1998 to what I inherited. But it was an organization that was very much strained at its size. And it had grown so quickly that there weren't always clear lines of separation in terms of the role of board, staff, and community because there almost are no lines in many cases in the policy making process when there's so much debate and dialogue and editing and reversion going on. And that's fine. But when it comes to execution and operations, there have to be clear lines. Think alone of the compliance function. The ICANN staff has to implement compliance. Compliance is not a popularity contest, okay? And it's not an open process. The definition of the policies is, but not the execution. So, what we focused on in many cases was clarifying roles. And there was a word that had to be used quite frequently. And that word was, and I, I mentioned it to the board when the board brought me on, was the word no. No, we can't do that and everything else. We've got to make a trade off. We either stick with our plans and hold the line, or we change the plans, but then we extend our time frames. Single character, you know, TLDs is a, as one of hundreds of examples. So, there was a lot of changes in how we ran the processes as well as the, the internal meetings we had, the systems uh, that, we, that we brought into place. So every major software system in ICANN has been upgraded in the last three years. The finance and accounting system, the intranet that replaced dozens of separate disparate pieces we had internally, the external internet and, uh, and web page that you now use, so many of you, in the community the root zone management system, the first in ICANN's history to bring more tight control around the root zone process for quality and, and uh, security. These have all been done, every single major system has been replaced. Every major facility has been upgraded to a class A high technology facility as of last week. 
new offices in Palo Alto, Los Angeles, Playa Vista, Brussels, and DC, uplifting the infrastructure to support our great staff and the great members of the community and all the work that they do. Um, and the, the goal of all that, of course, was simply to drive things forward and to make the initiatives happen. So let's look at some of that progress in opening up and transforming the DNS. And of course, we all know because you laid down this vision many years ago, but the goal of that domain name system is, is, is to be unified and open globally. And I think we made very good progress. Certainly, we managed 100% perfect uptime of the combined overall root server system and 100% accuracy in the IANA operations. We accomplished a lot as well in terms of opening it up for the people of the world. When we met in November of 2009 in Korea, you approved the internationalized domain names that many people in this room helped to create from scratch. Those IDNs are now in the root of the internet. More than 30 representing more than 20 different country code operations. Now what does it mean to you and me? Some of us don't use Chinese characters or Japanese characters or Devanagari, okay? But half the world does. Half the users of the internet today, over a billion, do not, do not use a Latin script in their first language. And as the internet moves from around two and a half billion users today to three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five billion users, there'll be many more that need those internationalized domain names. And together we've done that. And in doing so, we've enhanced the unity of the domain name system and the internet. And then of course, the next year we added DNSSEC uh, to the root of the internet. The work that cryptographically that Dr. Crocker and so many others had helped to develop that was important for adding security, a necessary trust anchor in the internet that's probably gonna be used for decades to come. And as we heard today, the Czechs are doing a, an excellent job of implementing, but DNSSEC rooted the internet in a way to provide security and now we're all working on its adoption. That was another big move. And then finally, the effort that so many of you have been working on for up to seven years, and that is the new generic top-level domain program, opening up the right of the dot of the internet more broadly than has ever been done in history. And I remember when I first came to ICANN, my first meeting in Seoul, I was on an escalator with one of the leaders of the uh, GNSO. And he asked me, he said, do you think you're ever going to be able to get new GTLDs to actually happen in this organization? And my answer was, you bet. You got the right man. I said, I don't, I don't care what it's going to take, but it's been approved as policy. It's been approved by the board. My job is to help lead and deliver the results, and we will get it done. Doesn't matter how long it takes, we're going to lay it down. We'll do a project plan, which we did and which we stuck to and delivered with the exciting reveal that just happened on June the 13th with 1,930 names included. What remarkable progress for the domain name system. So you look at IDNs, you look at DNSSEC, you look at this new GTLD program, we have fundamentally opened up and transform the domain name system these last three years through your incredible efforts, through staff's incredibly hard efforts, through the board's incredibly great efforts. So it's a lot of change. The third thing that we can look at and that I'm very excited about is the further internationalization of the organization. Now it's always been international, but it continues to grow uh, and become more international and to me that was critical. I felt when I came in that this organization was too Western focused, too focused on issues in North America and Europe, for example, and it needed to consider the rest of the world. Today, half of the users of the internet are in Asia alone, and there's many in Africa and Latin America as well, and it's important that we focus on that. So what did we do? Well, my first day on the job, I was given a blank sheet of paper, and I was told that the, the memorandum of understanding with the Department of Commerce of the U.S. government was not going to be renewed by ICANN. And I was told, you better come up with something better, and you have to get it done in 90 days because the MOU is going to expire. 
Together we worked and we created the affirmation of commitments. The affirmation which makes ICANN so much more international, constitutionally or contractually with what we have. And look at the great work of the three review teams that have already finished or nearly finished their work. The ATRT team, the Who Is team, the Security and Stability Resilience team. These teams are international with people from the private sector, from government, from civil society, from all over the world. So we internationalize ICANN with the affirmation of commitments very fundamentally, and you have executed. Secondly, you look at the staff. When I came in, many people didn't understand when I said I want every employee, every new person we had in staff should be multilingual fluent. Multilingual fluent. I don't care where in the world they're from, but they need to be multilingual fluent. People say, why? Why does that matter for someone who's just in the technical shop? Why does that matter for someone who's a receptionist? Why does that, you know, sure that makes sense in the field organization or somewhere else. And I said, it's cultural. We need to be of the world. We need to reflect the world. We have to do it with our people. Approximately 75% of every staff member we've hired since I came is multilingual fluent. And it's shifted the culture of ICANN internally. And when you walk down the halls, even in Los Angeles, you're very likely to hear Tagalog spoken, or Spanish, or French, or any number of languages. And that's an important step. On the executive management team, when I came, there was one or two instances of a foreign, foreign language uh, fluency on the entire executive team. Today, there are nine. Nine instances of foreign language fluency and quite a number of people that were, that were born in the non-English speaking world. That's important, that internationalizes us, helps us understand the views of the world. You look at the expansion in our community and the growth, the GAC, many new countries, much, much more than 110 countries today advise the board of directors of ICANN, it's grown. The CCNSO has grown by more than 30 new country code members in the last three years. The, ALAC has added more than 30 chapters around the world, including many new, new countries and cities. And the GNSO participation has expanded as well. The other thing we tried to focus on was the developing countries and their needs, right? We passed for the first time in history a needy applicant support program to provide support to them under the new GTLD program. We focused on activities and events in developing countries. And there's one in particular that I want to mention that I personally focused on as CEO, and that is China. I focused on China. The reason I did that is 25% of the internet users in the world today are from China. Half are from Asia. And I had lovely visits to India as well, to our friends and colleagues there, and to dozens of countries I went to. But I decided to focus on China because when I looked at our ICANN community, I said, we don't have near 25% representation of 25% of the internet users in the world and where that number is even expanding. And so there's a number of moves that we made from the frequent visits. I think I was in uh, Beijing as, as, or, as more times than I was in Brussels uh, in this position. That was a change. And we worked together successfully on many different projects. The Chinese government participated, participated in the ATRT and hosted an ATRT meeting in Beijing. This was excellent uh, engagement and process. We worked together on internationalized domain names, and in particular, one of the toughest and one of the greatest achievements of our board the last three years, out of many, was the incredible efforts put in to create synchronized TLDs to address the issues of Chinese-speaking people in three different regions uh, in Asia. That was an intensive effort. It was extremely difficult, but we got it done. And it didn't mean much to some of us who don't use Chinese as a language, but it means a lot to them. And, the, and their involvement and their support and technical expertise were truly, truly impressive. We hosted events for the nominations committee, uh, or, or it, uh, to support the nominations committee with the Internet Society of China to help recruit more people into ICANN leadership. And then, of course, we worked on ID Invariance Project. That was done in six centers around the world, and one of the main centers was China which was extremely active and engaged. And I have to say, we have been so warmly received and supported by the excellent leadership and internet community in China, in the government, in the private sector, and in civil society. And I'm a changed person for it. 
I feel so grateful and I've developed an enormous affection for China. The other thing that happened is, of course, we promoted a vice president, a very senior technical expert and respected in government uh, 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 globally as well as in China, who's joined us as a VP of Asia, joining another strong team of regional VPs, which also internationalizes the organization because each region deserves to have that level of representation inside ICANN to be able to deal with uh, senior people and corporations and governments and all the policy making processes. But these changes had an impact. And this is, and, and the growing engagement of the, the Chinese community and support for what we've done and the support for ICANN was evidenced on December 8th when we announced the vice president in China. The announcement was made by Minister Wong of the State Council Information Office. And his words were, this new vice president is now a bridge from China and Asia to ICANN and the world. And to have such significant support from a top level leader. That announcement, by the way, appeared, guess how many times on the internet now? 180,000 in Chinese language. It's a very significant announcement and it changes our organization. And again, it's only part of the whole global picture of who we are, but it's something I took on to help transform this organization and ensure its future as a truly multi-stakeholder organization with deep participation from all cultures and all people in this world. The last note on internationalization, I think we can all remember, and it was a lot of fun, when we were in Senegal, right? So in the last three years, we've had a number of sitting and former heads of state speak to us. But the speech by President Wad in Senegal was particularly interesting. Why? You may remember, because he spoke to us addressing ICANN policy issues, item by item. Imagine that, a head of state engaging with ICANN in his speech, in his presentation and dialogue, discussing our policy issues. And this was a great step, step forward and wonderful to see it from a, a leader in Africa. Now, I'm not gonna stand here and tell you everything was perfect. We certainly know it was not. And it can't be in an organization that's grown, incidentally, when I came, ICANN had 57 million dollars of funds under management. Today, $444 million. We have seen real growth. This is a large and complex program that we're running with new GTLDs. It's a transformation and it's, and it's a significant change. And as an example of our imperfections is we had the glitch in the application software that we disclosed uh, uh, on April 12th and shared the information we had about it. It was an extremely difficult process internally. It was exhausting. The first thing I did as a CEO is form a crisis management team that began to meet its first time within a couple of hours and then we began to meet every day. About 12 to 15 of us. Sometimes it was an hour, sometimes it was two or three. Every day. Starting on Saturdays and Sundays as well. And then after some period of time, it became every weekday, but it was exhausting and excruciating to figure out the dimensions of what could have happened because of one tiny software glitch, what users could have seen what usernames, what users could have seen what file names. And we, we scrubbed these enormous amounts of data, like 500 gigabytes of data, to figure out who had seen what when. And then once we figured all that out, of course, as you know, we shared that with you, the applicants, because that was our job, was to focus on the applicants. Share with the world what was going on, but focus on the applicants. But it's one of the most exhausting management processes I've ever been through and for the organization. We learned a lot of skills on it. We had a lot of expertise. We hired a, uh, a nationally and internationally respected crisis management leader as part of the team. We hired world-class communication experts as part of the team. And those cryptic little messages that you'd see coming out every day, you can't even imagine how many hours were put into those documents and those statements to make sure they were precisely accurate and appropriate. And, uh, but we worked through it. These things will happen in any organization, in a growing organization, we work through it. Um, so, that's the summary. I think those are the three areas that we really made progress, again. 
Uh, and I want to talk now about where we're going. So let's talk about who's going to be taking the reins here. And so first I want to address Akram, Habibi. It has been such an incredible opportunity to work together these last few years. You are so capable, so talented, you have such great integrity, and you are universally respected within the organization. And it gives me enormous pride as the CEO and a member of the management team that chose you to see you stepping up and taking this role. And ICANN's fortunate to have you, and I think you know you have my 100% support. Fadi, I am so happy you are coming here. You are a great man, you have a strong past, you have accomplished so much in business, technology, and even up from the, you know, the rags into riches, everything you've done, very impressive. And the work with the uh, open source and standards community is a fantastic background. And what's great about both of these next leaders is they were both born as non-native English speakers. And they're the first CEOs in ICANN to do that. Number five and number six, if my math is right up here right now. But that's an, a, a great sign of change and transformation in, in ICANN. And so, Fadi, I want to let you know, as I've told you privately as well, you have my full support. And I want to see you exceed, succeed in every way. And I want to ask all of you, will you support this man? Will you support Fadi? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And I know through our shared excellent relationship with Akram, I think it brings a, a really strength of transition uh, in the organization. So I'm very pleased about that. And really I want to thank all of you, all of you in the community, all of you on the board, Steve, Bruce, all of you in the staff who have worked so tirelessly for three years. It's just been an incredible honor to represent you and to serve this organization and to work with you. And I also want to thank you for something special. That may not be exactly what you expect, but I want to thank you for the enduring criticism that this organization receives and its leadership receives because it's one of the most open, transparent, and debated policy groups and organizations in the world. And that constant pressure in addition to the tectonic pressure of being near one of the few things that's a connector in the internet, namely the root and the address blocks, has made me a better leader. I have learned so much through this experience, and I really am grateful for that and for the many friendships that I've been able to make. So I think we've made a lot of progress, and we're doing what we need to do to keep that internet unified for mankind. Because the internet, as we know, is one of the greatest blessings on earth to mankind. It helps to unite us all. And working together, may we step forward and serve that simple mission that we share. One world, one internet, everyone connected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.